Welcome to Garden Plants with Jim Putnam. Let's talk Southern Live Oaks. This is Quercus virginiana. This is the Southern Live Oak. Uh, this one is uh, particularly beautiful and particularly old. Uh, this is the Mammoth Oak at Lake Griffin State Park uh, in Fruitland Park, Florida. Uh, this one is estimated to be around 500 years old. Uh, these uh, can live up to 1,000 years, 900 to 1,000 years it's estimated. Uh, some of them are so old and so magical, uh, like this one, uh, that they have names. Again, this one's the uh, Mammoth Oak. Uh, Steph and I will spend some time, you know, stopping anywhere that there's one that's named uh, because they are uh, absolutely incredible. So Southern Live Oaks are native from Eastern Texas along the Gulf of Mexico pretty much all of Florida, Southern Georgia, Eastern South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. So sl sliver across the bottom. There is a little mixing with some other oaks uh, that goes on. And so you'll see some different, some different variations, but the Quercus virginiana, like this one is super spreading. Frequently you will see the limbs go right down to the ground. Uh, this one has been kind of lifted up uh, over some period of time, or this is the way it naturally grew. Uh, in this in this wooded space, but the limbs are up a little bit higher, but they're crazy spreading. This thing is home to so much life. Uh, you have these resurrection ferns uh, that are up here. There's Spanish moss in it, and then of course many many other things uh, call these live oaks home. There are several oaks that are actually referred to as live oaks. And again, this is the southern live oak. All the live oaks uh, tend to be evergreen, but they're not actually evergreen. They typically they do a leaf drop right before new leaves emerge. Sometimes um, they'll drop the leaves early depending on the winter and actually be fairly bare. So it's not technically an evergreen, but it, do, it is holding leaves uh, through the winter months. These can reach 40 to 80 feet in height and 50 to 100 feet in width. And this one's probably more like 120, 140 feet in width, something like that from the tip of the branch to the tip of the branch uh, on the other side. But again, this one's 500 years old, so I don't think uh, if you plant one of these, you have to worry about it getting necessarily that big uh, in our lifetime. I said they get 40 to 80 feet tall, but Steph and I frequently see them when we're out hiking that are really just kind of shrub size in the understory. So if they're in deep shade, lean soils, out you know out in the wild, you know that can have some impact on them. Uh, and then you know if they get enough space, get enough sunlight. You know, this is what they do. In your garden, uh, if you were going to plant one of these southern live oaks, uh, it's going to need, the more sun, the better. They will take part shade uh, or, you know, uh, all the way up to full sun without any problem. Rate of growth is really going to be dependent on the condition. So out here in the wilds of Florida, in this sandy soil with a lot of rain, the soils are probably pretty lean. This thing is probably taken a long, and it has, they estimate it to be a 500 years you know, to reach this size. In a, gar in a cultivated garden where you're mulching it and keeping the weeds away from it and potentially watering it, it's gonna grow faster. Still a slow growing tree, but, uh, but it is gonna grow faster in a cultivated garden. These are hard, considered hardy in zone eight to 10. The ones we see up in Raleigh where we are, which we're in zone seven B in Raleigh, uh, there's a couple at the farmer's market in a big open parking lot that's all asphalt. There's one in our neighborhood that's about 10 houses from us that's quite beautiful, but it's in a very protected space. And so that's one thing. If you're in zone 7B, they are definitely doable, um, and e probably even in 7A, but it needs to be in a more protected uh, space, uh, probably somewhere where a house is going to block the winter wind or you know, again, a large asphalt space or downtown space. So the purpose of putting a Southern Live Oak into a landscape is definitely going to be to become a shade tree or a specimen tree, not a great street tree, uh, not a street, you know, uh, or, or, you know, planted in a narrow space. It needs lots and lots of room. And you're really probably not planting this for your benefit. You know, I, you know, a lot of times we plant, you're planting shade trees for the next generation. So keep that in mind. Uh, def definitely worth it. Uh, all the life that's in this tree is just uh, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, these have little teeny tiny acorns. I mean, on these giant, giant trees, they're, they're brown or almost black. And so there's a lot of times when we're out hiking, you know, we're looking at the acorns on the ground and trying to identify them. If you see ones that are almost black and kind of 
weirdly small for such a giant for such a giant tree. Uh, that's what that is. So this is truly one of the most adaptable plants uh, there is, uh, other than other than cold tolerance. Uh, in, almost anywhere in the in the deep south, we see these growing in very wet areas. I mean, literally right on the side of swampy areas. Sometimes in the swamps, if there's a little raised space, into extremely dry uh, conditions. Uh, alkaline soils, uh, although probably not thriving in alkaline soils, but will tolerate alkaline soils. Uh, acid soils, again, wet spaces, dry spaces, just amazing uh, the amount of tolerance this plant has. Now, if you're buying one, it's likely going to come in a container. It has not been used to being in a really swampy, wet space. Uh, so going into your garden, I would look at a spot that stays uh, moist but well drained is probably ideal uh, if you're putting it in a dryer a space that's going to stay drier you want to water it for the first couple of seasons once it's rooted in and established itself though this is going to be an extremely drought tolerant tree really not a whole lot of maintenance to do on this this is not a tree that's going to need to be fertilized if you happen to have other things planted in your garden and you're fertilizing them it will get some fertilizer but it really doesn't need to be uh, have, have any additional fertilizer again water it in you know, until it's established. Once it's established, you really don't have to water it anymore, either if you're in an area that gets uh, pretty regular rainfall. Uh, the, the main key to these uh, in, a land, in, a, in a residential landscape is going to be that the limbs want to go down to the ground, okay? And I don't think, you know, unless you have a very large lot that that's going to work for you. So in the first few years, it's probably best to be uh, taking off some of the lower branches that want to come down to the ground and so that you end up with a trunk that's off the ground like this one. If you go, all the limbs on this one have been are up at an angle out away from the tree. If you go and look at some of the others like the angel oak, uh, the limbs come right down to the ground. If you look at the two that are at the entryway to the Ralston, the limbs come almost down to the ground. Hammond Research Station has a giant one same thing the limbs come down to the ground that's okay in a big beautiful garden where people are coming and visiting it and there's lots of acreage in your landscape though you're probably going to want it to initially the first few years lift it up some um, so that so that it ends up looking more like this and you can walk around it and actually use your, you can use your garden so um, let's see these are uh, wind tolerant soil tolerant heat and humidity tolerant uh, deer resistant uh, all the things you'd want from a, uh, you know, a big, beautiful specimen uh, added into your garden. Uh, this, uh, the mammoth oak here is the second largest one in the state of Florida. And uh, Steph and I, again, will stop anywhere there's one of these named trees and take a look at it because they are my absolute favorite uh, shade tree. So guys, thanks for watching.